is on for three escapees who busted out of an Arkansas jail earlier this week. Police say accused killer William Callahan escaped for the second time in four months. This time he joined five other inmates, cut holes in the ceiling of the Van Buren County Jail, then climbed out to freedom. I mean, I didn't think there was any way they could reach where they got out. Police believe the escapees formed a human ladder to reach the 20-foot high ceiling. Three of the escapees have already been captured, but Callahan, Lester Byes Jr., and accused rapist Edward Messer Jr. are still on the loose. Police believe the trio may be in Missouri, traveling together in a stolen green 1995 Pontiac Bonneville with Arkansas tag number 991JXY. If you've seen any of these escapees, call us right now at 1-800-CRIME-TV. You may remember the college town creeper. At first, cops say he was only a peeper. Then they say his obsession grew deeper. Well, tonight, the creeper is caught. John Lieberman has all the details. It began in 2003. A creep lurking in the shadows, making the young women in the college town area of Ithaca, New York, realize someone was out there watching their every move. Within about that year, year and a half, we had over 20, 20 incidents. These windows as their children. Veronica Vasquez was a live-in house mother in College Town who supervised a dorm full of high school girls. It's dangerous. Not a lot of people lock their doors. I wasn't really in the habit of locking my door. Veronica had been more concerned with girls sneaking out rather than with someone sneaking in. But she quickly changed her tune as the man now dubbed the College Town Creeper was making his presence felt. We would get the paper and we would see that there had been a new Creeper incident and we would tell the girls in the dorm, you know, you guys have to be really careful. Despite such concerns, the Creeper still found plenty of open doors. And peeping alone was no longer enough to gratify him. Soon, cops say, the creeper's appetite became even more twisted and dangerous. <laughs> Parents and students took to the streets, demanding the creeper be caught. Then, cops got a big break. They say they caught this guy in the act, peeping into a basement window. Let's get up against the fence. Get up there. His name was Abraham Shorey, a short order cook with six kids who lived just outside the city. Shorey, who'd been arrested in the past for peeping, seemed nervous in the interrogation room. But he insisted he wasn't the college town creeper. You're not the guy that's doing it. Because none of the Creeper's victims could ID Shorey, cops had to let him go. Okay, yeah. Very good, Abe. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming down. About two months later, October 24, 2004, Veronica Vasquez was trying to fall asleep at her boarding house. Although Veronica had been vigilant about reminding her girls to lock the front door, that didn't mean they always listened. And all of a sudden, I look over, and the door that connects my bedroom to the girls' dorm is opening. And I knew immediately that it was the creeper. Because he had been hitting all these houses that were right around our house. With adrenaline pumping through her veins, Veronica chased the creeper down the hall. He got away, but she got a good look at him. When police brought Veronica in for a lineup, she had no trouble picking out the intruder. It was Abraham Shorey. Oh, I felt great. I felt like, I felt like Superman. I felt like a crime fighter. <laughs> Once again, it looked like Shorey had been caught in the act. This time, cops could charge him, but only with minor crimes at first. So a judge released him on $5,000 bail. By the time police could charge him with sexual abuse, Shorey had skipped town. When we 
we told you about the College Town Creeper back in January, we got a huge response. He said he's staying there. That's what the guy said. And as the tips poured in, we quickly noticed a pattern. Many of them were coming from the exact same place, a small town in central Florida called Pedro. So we came here to Pedro, population 500, to find out why so many people believe they spotted Shory here. And we found there was something here that might have proved irresistible to our fugitive. Every year, the Rainbow Gathering, held just outside of town, attracts a huge crowd of hippies. Our tips told cops that Abe Shorey loved to go to hippie fests like this. In fact, he'd travel hundreds of miles to find one. That's why police believe the people who told us they spotted Shorey outside this grocery store on several occasions were dead on. He was probably 5'10", 5'8", maybe 145, 150 pounds, sandy blonde hair, scruffy, big baggy blue jeans, black shirt, tennis shoes. So how sure are you that this is Abraham Shorey? 100% positive that is the guy that was hanging out right here on this corner. The Rainbow Festival lasted until the end of February. Although cops believe Shorey was here, they weren't able to spot him, and they had no idea where he went next. So once again, they turned to your tips and followed leads all over the country. But the accused college town creeper seemed to have crept back into the shadows. A chance encounter 3,000 miles from the hippie festival in Florida would drag Abraham Shorey back into the light. On May 3rd, officers in Chula Vista, California, just outside of San Diego, pulled over a car for speeding. The driver had no ID, so they arrested him. When we ran him through the fingerprint system, the information we got back that he, was that he was cleared locally. And uh, based on that, based on the information that we gave him, and that at that point we had nothing to hold him on other than the minor traffic violation, he was released. The Chula Vista police had also sent the man's prints to the national database. Those results take longer to get back, 24 hours longer. So it wasn't until a day after they let him go that they learned that the man they'd arrested was Abraham Shorey. Now, the manhunt was on. This time, Shorey couldn't slip away. Within two days, cops had him in handcuffs, sitting in the back of a patrol car. No comment. No comment at all? Nope. I mean, are you surprised? I mean, how are you feeling? I mean, I'm not guilty for the crimes I committed, or that they said I committed, so that's all I'm saying. You say you're innocent? Yeah. Why'd you run? Um, I didn't come out this time. Yeah. You have six kids at home, you run with six yeah. kids at home, you're innocent? That's going to make a lot of sense. I'm not going to say anything else. Shorey knew exactly what crimes he was accused of committing. He told the police that while he was on the run, he kept up with their hunt for him on our website, amw.com. But although he knew the heat was on, investigators say Shorey still couldn't resist his sick urges. He's been charged with sexually assaulting a woman in San Diego, and more charges may follow. But thanks to some good police work, this is one creep we won't have to worry about anymore. Coming up, on a beautiful spring day, their mother went for a drive and never came back. It's like she just disappeared off the face of the earth. Join her children on their quest of life and death. We thought, yeah, you know, we're going to find her in a couple of days. The search for their missing mom, next.